You're watching the Luca Rosano Show. Here's your host, Luca Rosano. Welcome back, everyone, to the Luca Rosano Show presented by Dave and Buster's Vaughn. I got a very special guest for this week. As you can see, the senior writer for Lakers Nation, Trevor Lane. Trevor, how's it going, man? Uh, going good, Luca. Thank you so much for, for having me on the show here. Yeah, this is, uh, I've been wanting to get you on my show for a very long time. I follow your work closely, very impressed by what you do. Before we get into some hard-hitting basketball questions here, I want to first start the show by asking, how did you get involved with Lakers Nation? Um, so Lakers Nation has been uh, been something that built up for a long time. Uh, it, it started off just with my own passion for, for writing was something that I was really interested in. I tried writing like a few novels and things and had these great ideas that I was all excited about. And and then halfway through it, I'd wind up just getting bored with it and uh, and couldn't get it finished because I was spending so much of my time on basketball news, basketball rumors. This is back in 2013, 2012. And that that was drawing all of my attention. I thought, you know what, I got to I gotta stop this and I got to write what I love. If I'm going to actually write, I need to write sports and I need to write Lakers basketball because that's what I'm spending my time on anyway. And um, and so I did and I uh, started up my own my own blog and just kind of used that to build up a little bit of a backlog. And I had a little bit of a sports writing background before that and uh, and then went to a few different sites and said, hey, here's my stuff. Can I come in and, and do something for you? And, you know, I don't even worry about paying me. Just just let me come in and kind of get some exposure. And I did that and eventually caught the attention of Lakers Nation and, and they brought me in. And uh, my role there has grown over the years, gone from writing one article a week. Uh, to start out to now I'm doing all of their video and, and audio content and all the, the stuff on YouTube that you see and and the Lakers Nation podcast and, and all of that sort of stuff. So it's been a labor of love, but something that has just kind of grown over the years. Did you have a background in journalism? I didn't. Uh, I have a degree actually in, in history and political science. Um, so that's my my background through school, but I've always I've always loved uh, writing. And so that's, that's kind of what drew me towards that side. Um, but I don't have a, my degree is not in, in journalism. I became familiar with your work, of course, with the Lakers nation YouTube channel. You're essentially the face of that platform. You guys are almost at 300,000 subscribers. That's something I can appreciate as a guy who's at like 12 K subs trying to grow. Uh, what do you credit the rapid growth to of that channel? I think a lot of it is just, you know, the Lakers fan base being so huge and so diehard and so interested in Lakers content. That's certainly certainly part of it. You know, I'd like to think that that part of it is the kind of content we're putting out, the analysis and stuff that I'm doing that uh, that some of the other guys we have on are doing. Gary Sheffield Jr., Chris, the Masterpiece Masters, who do the live shows with me and, and people like that. Uh, but you know, I really think a lot of it is just, just the Lakers, being the Lakers and being such a huge brand and being something that people are – are wanting information about they're going looking for that and that certainly certainly helps and um and it also doesn't hurt that i can talk lakers basketball 24 hours a day <laughs> seven days a week so i've always got something that i can put out there on on youtube so that's um that certainly doesn't doesn't hurt the process uh trevor what would your advice be to people who want to try to make a full-time living uh in the sports media world um is to get comfortable with failure and get comfortable with with just not being good right it takes a, it takes a while it takes a lot of trial and error at least that was key uh for me is just getting past that initial hurdle of i'm gonna i'm gonna release something to the world for everybody to read or to every for everybody to hear or watch and uh and they're gonna critique it and some people are gonna hate it some people might love it uh, but you have to be okay with that you have to be thick-skinned and, and be okay with putting yourself out there when i first started the lakers nation podcast uh, gosh, it was about four years ago now. I I knew like I'm gonna be terrible at first. I'm gonna be awful. I go back now and listen to those first episodes and just and just cringe. I mean, the the Lakers Nation staff laugh about them. They they replay them every now and then just to make fun of me. Um, but but that's that's key is just understanding that it, it's a process and it takes growing and uh, and and you never stop with that. So uh, it's certainly not easy. But again, you just kind of gotta get out there and do it and get over that hurdle of of like hey. If I fail at something, I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm going to keep pushing forward until I get to where it is that I want to go. That's a very good point because I feel like a lot of people, when first starting out in this game, they'll have like the first one to two to even three years of no results and then they'll quit. But you just alluded to you got to push through those tough times, keep going. You're going to get better naturally and uh, obviously reap the benefits uh, sooner, hopefully, rather than later. 
Um, Trevor, let's get into some basketball talk now. What's your reaction to the Lakers bringing in J.R. Smith for the restart season? Um, you know, I think that a lot of people are, are making a big deal out of it and everything. And of course, people remember, you know, the meme, the J.R. Smith for getting time and score with the Cavs. Uh, but you know what? I don't think it really is going to matter all that much for the Lakers. I mean, in an ideal situation, maybe he comes in, what, 10, 15 minutes a game, can provide a little bit of shooting off the bench. But that's everything breaks right. His defense is at the love at a higher level because he's had, you know, rest now than what we had seen previously. His defense really dropped off uh, in his last season there. So that's going to be a question mark. Um, is he shooting at a highly efficient level? Is he ready to actually play the NBA game again? He's been out for a long time. Uh, you know, I think it's it's more this is a guy who LeBron is comfortable with. LeBron knows. He knows that if he kicks the ball out to him, J.R. Smith can uh, can hit shots. But I wouldn't look at him as, okay, this is the guy replacing Avery Bradley. I don't think that's happening there. You're not going to see all those minutes go to J.R. Smith. I think it's going to be Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Alex Caruso, players like that who will absorb those minutes more than J.R. Smith. So, you know, as exciting as it is to have a, a new signing on the squad, I don't think the impact is going to be quite as big as a lot of people are thinking. How do you think he'll fit in? Because you just said right now you don't see him necessarily getting a ton of minutes. So what do you think his role will be on this team, especially as we enter the postseason? So for J.R. Smith, I do think that he he's going to fit just fine. I mean, he's a guy that LeBron trusts. Um, he's been around the team a little bit. We've heard that he's been in kind of some of these workouts and things like that. He's a veteran. I'm not worried about him in the locker room or, or anything of that nature. I think he'll he'll fit fine. He can provide a little bit of shooting off the bench. And that's really all that you need if you're the Lakers. You need somebody who can come in, stretch the floor a little bit when needed. And I'm hoping he's okay, too, with, with not playing, potentially. This has been one of the benefits of Jared Dudley over the course of the season, is that he doesn't care if he only plays every five games, six games. It doesn't matter to him. He's happy to go and play whatever the role, role the team needs him to. And so I'm hoping Jared Smith has the, the same kind of mentality. Who knows? Maybe he winds up playing every game because he proves himself and he's a, a scorer off the bench and everything works out perfectly. I'm just saying I don't want to set the bar quite that high for him right now. I'm more in the wait-and-see mode. Let's see what he looks like and then go from there. Well, the Lakers begin their uh, restart season against the Clippers in the Battle of L.A., of course, on July 31st. And what could be a preview of the Western Conference Finals? At least that's what I think so. Uh, how do you see these two teams stacking up against each other in your eyes, Trevor? I mean, they're always compared to one another of which team's going to get out of the West, which team uh, may ultimately win the championship. How do you see these two teams stacked up against one another? It's a really interesting matchup when you look at it. You know, heading into the season, we looked at it and we said, okay, so the Lakers are going to have the advantage on the inside. They've got the interior scoring, the the bulk. You've got, you know, JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard. Hopefully Dwight Howard. We'll see. Um, you've got Anthony Davis. You've got LeBron James, players like that. Uh, whereas the Clippers have the perimeter defense. You've got Patrick Beverly, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, all those guys. So it's going to be the interior defense of the Lakers versus the the outside defense of the Clippers. And then of course, you know, the two superstars on each side going, going head to head, AD and LeBron versus Kawhi and, and Paul George. Um, it, it's a really, really close matchup. I'm what I think what surprised me the most is how good the Clippers have been on the boards. I thought the Lakers would have a big advantage there, but the Clippers send so many players at the offensive glass that they actually um, are getting a ton, a ton of opportunities there. They're one of the top offensive rebounding teams in the league. You've seen guys like Patrick Beverly, Beverly dive back into the paint and keep things alive. Evita Zubats has been really good at just tipping the ball. And then Montrez Harrell can feast when uh, when a big rotates over to deal with a drive from, say, Paul George or, or Kawhi Leonard. So they've been really, really good there. And that's been a little bit of a surprise to me. I, I like that advantage for the Clippers side of things. Losing Avery Bradley hurts a bit for the Lakers in terms of the amount of pressure they can put on whoever the Clippers ball handler is, whether it's Lou Williams or Patrick Beverly. Um, last time around, the Lakers did beat the Clippers, and they did that largely by picking on Lou Williams in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what what Doc Rivers does there. Does he bench Lou Williams down the stretch because the Lakers took such advantage of him, or does he continue to roll with them and hope his offense kind of uh, kind of mitigates the issue? Um, it, there's so many different battles to break down here. We could do it all day, but the Lakers-Clippers matchup is about as close as you can get and it's great for, for this rivalry. So Trevor, do you ultimately see these two teams meeting up in the conference finals? Or is there another team you got your eye out on that could be the biggest hurdle for the Lakers in the West, if not the Clippers? No, I mean, I would pick Lakers versus Clippers versus the field versus anybody else getting there. Um, but 
That said, we're moving into uncharted territory here, right? This yeah. is going to Orlando, taking four plus months off. Who knows what things are going to look like? It's. I think every team's going to take a little bit of a step back, right? There's no way, no way that your chemistry, your rhythm, all of that is going to be where it was when you left off. It just, it's not going to be. Every team is going to take a step back. The question is, which teams can mitigate that the most? And those are the teams that are going to have a leg up in Orlando. So I think we could see some surprises. You could see, you know, the Houston Rockets vault up or somebody like that. OKC, uh, Utah, even though they're going to be missing Boyan Bogdanovich. Uh, any of these teams, the Denver Nuggets are certainly a dangerous squad. So those are all teams that I'm going to be watching. Um, I would still make it as the Lakers versus Clippers as the favorites. But it wouldn't really surprise me if you saw one of those teams catch fire and wind up representing the West in the, the Western Conference Finals there. Um, I think if I had to put money on somebody, I'd probably go Houston just yeah. because I think they throw such a different look at you with their small ball. And they've gone out of their way to sign all the wing defenders they can to go after guys like Kawhi, like Paul George, like LeBron. Um, so th that's going to be an interesting matchup to me, seeing what, what Houston can do. Yeah, there's usually no parity in the NBA. It's kind of one of those, you know, sports that you look at that you usually know who's going to meet up in the in the end, at least in the finals. But this year, exactly, you know, you have the uh, have the element of uh, the virus, all that time off. You don't know what could happen. You could, in fact, see like a team make a Cinderella type run. So it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. Let's get back to the Lakers schedule here, uh, Trevor. Uh, then in their next game, the Lakers play on August 1st against the Toronto Raptors, a team that I cover very close on this channel uh, the Raptors did win the lone meeting against these two teams back in November uh, what do you expect in this matchup you know what I think it's going to be obviously it's going to be very very close if, if these teams are playing all their their starters I don't know what that's going to look like I don't know if how teams are going to approach these eight games is it going to be let's play everybody and try to get our rhythm back or is it going to be more treated like a preseason in terms of let's kind of limit minutes and make sure everybody stays healthy and ease them into this i tend to think we'll see a little bit more of the latter which means it might not be kind of the all-out battle kind of that we saw the first time around but uh, regardless, both teams obviously have, have a lot of weapons, a lot of different players that can go go at each other. Uh, it, it's always fun just because the Raptors are such a well-coached team. You know, if, that, if there's any weaknesses, they're going to find them. They're going to exploit them. And I think that ultimately, you know, big picture from the Lakers' perspective, that's a good thing because it kind of shows you where you need to get better when you play a team like that. And that's exactly what you want in this eight game stretch is to figure out exactly which, which holes you need to plug in order to be ready for, for the playoffs coming up. I want to actually get your perspective on the Toronto Raptors. I like to ask this to the majority of my guests. Uh, what have been your overall thoughts on the Raptors season and how do you see them doing in the playoffs? I mean, it's been it's been great, right? This season has been has been better than anybody would have expected. You lose Kawhi Leonard and you lose Danny Green and you you barely skip a beat. I mean, that's that's amazing. Nobody would have would have projected that going into the season, but um, but they've been tremendous. They've been been an excellent team. They're a dangerous team because of how well they play together. You've got a veteran like Kyle Lowry who can do a lot of different things out there on the basketball floor who can hit big shots and, and make plays when you need them. Fred Van Vliet has been, been tremendous as well. And of course, Pascal Siakam has been all over the place. He's been, uh, been one of the, the most improved players this season. Again, he's uh, he's incredible. So you've got a lot of different weapons to turn to. And if, if Marcus all is as nimble as he's looking these days, um, this this could be a very tough team to deal with and and perhaps could wind up being the team to once, he, once again come out of the Eastern Conference. If Milwaukee isn't able to get their chemistry clicking, uh, like I was talking about earlier, who knows, Toronto could be that team to come out of the East. You mentioned losing Danny Green. Is this finally where he gets his ring? Because he still hasn't received that ring yet. <laughs> That's right. I don't, you know, he was, he made a joke about that the other day. He said, if the Lakers win it, win the championship this year, he's going to probably wind up getting his Lakers ring before he gets his <laughs> Toronto Raptors ring. So I don't know what the holdup is there. He'll, I'm sure he'll get it at some point, but, um, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, lastly here, Trevor, I'm going to put you on the spot. What is your NBA finals as of today? 
I mean, I'm going to go optimistic with this, and I'm going to say the the Lakers wind up making it to the NBA Finals. It feels like it's been their season. Losing Avery Bradley is certainly going to hurt, but the way everything has clicked with this team from a chemistry standpoint, the way these guys have gotten along, their friends on and off the floor, that's made a big, big difference compared to previous seasons. Um, I think they get there. I hope they get there. And, uh, you know, the way that Bucks team was playing before, uh, they went into the break, just their defense, the way they rotate, the way they act on a string, they are going to be a really tough team to beat. So I'm going to go Lakers and Bucks in the in the finals. Maybe that's the boring pick. It's certainly no no upsets or anything in there, but that's what I'll go with for uh, for the NBA finals. Fair enough. We're all entitled to our own opinion. Uh, Trevor, I have one last segment here. I want to run with you. I do this with all my guests. It's fun. It's lighthearted. Rapid fire. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, first question here. Favorite Laker of all time? Magic Johnson, absolutely. Grew up on Magic. Biggest name you've ever interviewed? Uh, LeBron James. That must have been really, really cool. That's on my bucket <laughs> list, man. Like, I hope one day I can interview LeBron. That, like, Do you want to speak a little bit about that? How was that experience? Was it video? Was it uh, audio? I mean, it was it was video. I was part of a I was in the media scrum, so it wasn't a one on one interview interview or anything like that. But I was there in the scrum, and I the first time I ever I ever met LeBron, I walked in the locker room, and there's LeBron standing there. I just went, "Oh my God, that doesn't look like a human being. Like he's <laughs> he's he is in just ridiculous shape. Um, it's incredible. So he's um, he, and he's great when he goes out and he gives his answers like he you're in the locker room and he's kind of sitting there he's doing his thing whatever and the cameras turn on and it's time for him to, to do his thing and it's like he turns on and he yeah. goes and he and he gives very succinct very professional answers because he's had so much so much experience doing it and um and then when the interview's done he goes right back to, to doing his thing uh so he's he's incredible he's a machine that's awesome uh next one here i'm a wrestling fan so i gotta ask has chris masters ever put you in the master lock he is not. He has not put me in the master log. We've talked about it a few times. We'll do it as a bit for the show or, or something like that. But uh, but no, I have not been been put in the master log. He mentioned one time that he gets asked to do it all the time at conventions and things. He puts everybody, you know, in master log. So I said, so I thought, okay, we'll we'll wait a little bit. One of these days, we'll we'll have to do it. But uh, but no, I have not been put in the master log. That'd be an awesome segment. Uh, best movie you've watched during quarantine. Oh, best movie I've watched during quarantine. Um, I've seen a few good. I watched all the Marvel movies in order. Oh, wow. um, so that was that was a fun experience. Um, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna go out of that group. I'll go Thor Rag, Ragnarok. I think that one's my favorite out of the, all the Marvel movies. What's one random thing people don't know about you? Um, that I am I am the reverse LeBron James. LeBron James is left-handed. Uh, when he writes, when he writes or when he's doing anything else, he is left-handed, uh, but he plays basketball right-handed. I am right-handed, but I play basketball completely left-handed. So that's random. Well, I actually didn't even know that about LeBron. So that is, that is pretty random. Um, some yeah. words, some words to live by. What are some words that you live by? Adapt and overcome, you know, and, and it kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying at, at the beginning there about pushing through failure. So many people will, they hit a roadblock. And throw their hands up and say, oh, okay, I give up, right? I'm going to do something else. I'm not going to do that. I, I believe you hit a challenge, you adapt to it, and you overcome. You find a way to still accomplish that goal. You were so ready for that. Usually that throws people off, but you knew exactly what you were going to say. And this is like you did not know the question, people. So you were ready for that one. <laughs> um, and then last yeah, one here, Trevor. Uh, rate your basketball game from 1 to 10. My own personal basketball game? Yeah. Oh man! At, at this point, it's probably a probably a two. There was a point um, many years ago when I was playing five, six nights a week, and I was I was much more up there. I'm a very uh, with the lefty shot and everything. I'm a very like kind of Derek Fisher, D'Angelo Russell style, like a homeless man's version of those guys. That's that was how I I played my game. But uh, but it's been a while since I've since I've played in any like competitive setting or anything like that. So I'm probably a two at best right now. Hey, you know what? That's that's all that matters. At least you're one of those numbers and not completely off the board, right? That's what counts. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Trevor, thank you so much, man. That was a ton of fun. I advise everybody uh, who isn't familiar with Trevor's work, go check it out over at LakersNation.com. Their Lakers Nation YouTube channel is approaching 300,000 subscribers, so that is a huge milestone on the horizon. And uh, Trevor, thank you so much, man. Enjoy the postseason, and uh, hopefully we could do this again uh, sometime soon. Absolutely. Yeah, anytime. And thank you so much for having me.
There you have it, guys. Trevor Lane. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for more podcasts, and rate this podcast wherever you find your podcast. This is Luke Rosano signing off. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll catch you all again in the next video. Peace out.